I was working late at my office when I got the call and first learned of the John Haig case. I've been pounding the pavement in this seedy town for more years than I care to remember. But this case, well, it was nothing like I'd ever seen before. My name's not important. I'm a private eye. John George Haig, the suspect, had a past as murky as London fog. Raised in a family as tight as a drum, he was a lone wolf from the start. His marriage to Betty Hamer was shorter than a cigarette break, and he'd been in and out of the slammer more times than a revolving door. People around him began to disappear, and that made Haig a suspect. When William McSwan vanished into thin air, Haig spun a yarn about him hiding from the draft. But the cops knew better. They just couldn't prove it. The Hendersons entered the picture about the time John Haig was just this side of Skid Row. They were a wealthy couple that Haig lured into his web of deceit. And then there was Olive Durand Deacon, the widow with a head full of dreams about artificial fingernails. She passed through Haig's life like a lamb to the slaughter, never to be seen again. This was about the time they called me in to track this sicko down. But it was his twisted fascination with acid that set my teeth on edge once I finally caught up to him. He'd started by experimenting on mice like some kind of mad scientist. He found the perfect way to make a body disappear like a puff of smoke. It's no wonder his victims were never found, just missing. William McSwan wasn't hiding from the draft like Haig tried to tell the authorities. The McSwan family had been dissolved like sugar in hot coffee, and Haig was living high on the hog in their estate. The wealthy Henderson couple? He took them for a one-way ride to his workshop of horrors, where they met their fate in a bubbling vat of acid. Haig taking their money too. Each time it was all about the dead presidents. But Haig's luck ran out like a cheap watch. I was on to him like white on rice and found the damning evidence in his workshop. Even the acid couldn't destroy everything, leaving behind gallstones and a piece of denture like a calling card from beyond the grave. In the end, Haig's guilt was as plain as the nose on your face. He tried to plead insanity, spinning a bizarre tale about a nightmare forest of blood-oozing trees, but the court saw through his smokescreen like a cheap suit. And so, John George Haig, the acid bath murderer, met his own fate at the hands of the executioner. He was a fitting end for a man who'd left a trail of destruction in his wake, like a tornado tearing through a small town. As for me, I poured myself a stiff drink and tried to forget the whole sordid affair. But some cases, like the taste of cheap whiskey, just linger on your tongue long after the bottle's empty. <laughs>